Welcome back to Bits of an Artist's Life. I'm Sandy Hester, and today I wanna to share with you a lot of things. There's a process that's been going on in my mind and a shift with my thoughts about materials and the way that I'm using them in my sketchbooks. And I just wanna have a conversation with you and share with you these thoughts. I've got a dog making noise over there, as usual. Because I think it's important and I think the way that I've been working in my sketchbooks is the way that I want to encourage you to be working in your sketchbooks. But I thought the discussion and the thought process of archival and light fast materials in your sketchbooks and layering things is something that I wanted to talk about. So first, let me talk a little about the way I use supplies in my sketchbooks. I like to layer. So I'll usually start with something thin, and transparent. I've mainly been working with Tombow markers and Eco Lines. I made a shift to those a while back because watercolor and gouache and paint took too long to dry. When I'm out in the landscape or at a coffee shop or wherever, or even just here in the studio, I'm working quickly. And when I'm out in the landscape, I'm, or wherever I am, I'm wanting to take notes. I'm trying to get as much information as I can and also want texture and depth. So I take a lot of different materials. And because of that, I don't want to start with paint because then I have to wait for it to dry. And I live in Tennessee and it's very humid year round here. So it just takes a long time to dry. And I want to get as much information, I feel like I'm shaking y'all, as I can while I am wherever I am. Even if I'm in the studio, like I'm wanting to get it done and get after it. If you are interested in seeing, like literally seeing how I put these materials down, I'm gonna show you a little bit today, but I have a new landscape class out called Taking Notes in the Landscape. Now you may say I'm not a landscape artist, I have no interest in the landscape. That is fine. In that, I think it's like eight hours, eight, nine hours, I can't remember how long, it's a long class. You get to see over and over and over how I use materials. And so it's very helpful. Um, it really doesn't matter what subject I'm doing, that is how I'm using materials, using all the things and putting them in and quickly and then how I bring those back and make more notes and sketches here in the studio after I've been out taking all those notes. There's a link in the um, description if you're interested in that class. But I will usually start with something like markers. That's something I've been using. I have mainly been using the Tombow markers because really the main reason is because they're thinner. I do like the Eco Lines a lot because they're refillable. I can change the color a little bit by adding different colors. I really like that, but they're fat and I can get more of the Tombows into my art roll than other markers. That's the main reason I've used Tombow. Plus I really like the colors of Tombow. I have the whole set, but they are not light fast or archival. So that's an issue that I want to talk about in a minute. Then I will usually go to color pencils, building up those layers, and then I will move to something like Neo Color or an oil pastel. Neo pastels or Sinelay, Sinelayer, I never can pronounce that and you guys try to help me say it all the time and I can't say it right. And I also have some cheap Pentel oil pastels that I use also, or soft pastels. Sometimes I'll use soft pastels as my base and build up on top of those because they're really nice to work on. And then when you get to the oil pastels, they create just some amazing texture. So in my sketchbooks, I do not care if it is archival and light fast. I don't care. The main reason I don't care or have not cared until now is because it's a place that I need to have full freedom to play. And I want supplies, whether they're archival and light fast or not, I want what's going to get something down and allow me to work over it and allow me to get it down fast and not have to wait for it to dry. So things like the gelatos um, or tempera paint sticks, I love those things. Love them. I forgot to mention I keep those in my bag a lot also. I'll use those as a top layer. They work well as any layer. And 
it's paint, but they dry super fast. So I've loved those. They are not archival either, or light fast. I feel like I totally just forgot my train of thought. So basically, working in layers, building up. But lately I've been thinking a lot about my supplies being archival. Oh, I just remembered my thought. Okay. The reason I don't worry about things being archival or light fast is because they're just going in my sketchbook. I work from all those sketches to make final pieces, but in the sketchbook, I just don't care. And I think having cheap supplies is so helpful to give you freedom. But in my sketchbooks, I mean, I use cheap and non-cheap. A lot of the color pencils I use are not cheap. The Neo colors aren't necessarily cheap, but I do have things like my Pentel, the, um, my Pentel oil sticks are real cheap. Mm. The Tombows, Ecolines, things like that, they are more in the craft, hobby, area. They're not fine art, but I've never worried about that. But lately I've been thinking more about it because of this. We're going to eventually start making books, reproducing basically my sketchbooks. And though my sketchbooks only see the light when I'm opening them or when I am, you know, showing you guys or using them as reference, you would think that maybe light fastness, I don't know why I just did that for light, light fastness, maybe the light, um, shouldn't be a problem. But there are some materials that even though they're not exposed to the light, they can still change colors, especially some inks. I'm not using this hand. I feel I'm trying to not knock the table, but uh, it's hard to not talk with both hands. Sorry, I just knocked y'all again. So I haven't been using my inks a lot because of that. Um, and I also know that the Tombows and Eco Lines, I think that they use some of the inks and they're not pigment based basically. So because of that, I've been thinking mainly about that part of my supply because I've been doing research on everything else. Neo colors, my soft pastels, my Neo pastels, my oil pastels, all those, my color pencils, all that. Light fast, archival, artist grade, quality. So I don't have to worry about those, but my Tombows have been an important part of my life. So I basically I'm upgrading. I've ordered something. I'm going to show you in a minute. It literally just came. So I get the, I'm going to show you guys and then I get the data play with them, which I'm excited. Replacing these with archival artist quality. They're not cheap. I mean, I don't really think Tombows are necessarily that cheap, especially if you buy the whole shebang like I did. I'm switching to a different brand, basically. Faber-Castell and Winsor & Newton have artist quality markers. I only have one. I have a Faber-Castell and I do really like it. I like the nibs a lot. There's so much about it I like. What I don't like is they are really big. I mean, basically it's like two of my Tombos, but I thought I probably need to invest and that's what I'm doing. So that's what's in my box. But yesterday I spent some time playing around with some other ways besides markers to layer. And I wanna show you those experiments and then we'll look at the markers because the reason I needed to see if I could layer in a different way is because these markers do not have the range that my Tombows have. I really like, I have some Tombos that I'm like, eh, they're, that I'm just in love with. They're light color, they're warm. I just go for them all the time. I have a blue that I'm not giving up on. I'm gonna keep. It is the 526 Tombow and I love it. Uh, I can't give that up unless some of the colors that I got can replace that, but I don't think it can. So I think I'm gonna to have to get over the fact that watercolor does not dry fast because that's one of the ways that I'm going to use watercolor and gouache. I've made a little palette I'm gonna show you. I wanna put you guys overhead now and show you what I did yesterday in my sketchbooks, playing around with different ways to layer and to see if I could still get that effect that I get when I layer in this way of marker, color pencil, and then thicker, chunkier stuff on top. Let me show you those, and then we'll open this box of supplies that just came and swatch them. I, I can't even remember the colors. I got a lot though, I think. Well, not I think. I know I got a lot because it was expensive. So let me get y'all overhead. I forgot to mention another marker that I found that is nice and archival are the Faber-Castell 
pit. I don't love these because I feel like they dry out really easy. They don't release as much pigment as the other markers, but I do have a few of those. Let me also just say, I forgot to mention this, please, please, please do not message me or leave me a comment about, oh, this is not archival or you or this color that you're using is not archival or any of that. Like, I don't really need archival light fast police. I've done some research. I don't need to be like crazy specific. I just basically wanted to overhaul my markers, realizing that they're the main things and knowing too that for the most part, I mean, there's just not gonna be light hitting these things and it's gonna be okay. You know what I mean? And I also just did a huge art supply haul last week. And so I'm very sensitive to the fact that I don't want you to be tempted to purchase these markers that I'm about to show you because they're not cheap. Um, but basically I emptied out all the markers in my art roll, except for the Faber Castell. And I'll use all of this space up here for my new ones. And then I have my color pencils and that is that in here. So let me move that out of the way. Then I put together a large palette. This is the Art Toolkit, Art Toolkit, and they have different sizes. I have three of the sizes. I have a mini one, I have this size, and then this is the big one. I put just empty ones in here because I'm gonna use this as a palette. I like to have a lot of palette space. And then here I have watercolor and gouaches just some of my favorite things. So basically I'll be using these colors mainly just to lay down a wash of color when I need it. Then these are my Tombow and Eco lines that I'm going to be doing away with. I mean, I will use them for friends. I'm always meeting up with friends and bringing supplies for them. And then I have my Neo colors and my Neo Pastels and Soft Pastels. But let me first show you what I did yesterday, thinking about layering. This is a sketch I did last weekend at a local park using my method of marker. I think I also used some paint markers and then building up with color pencil, Neo colors, all that stuff. There were things about this that I liked. So I thought, well, I'm gonna just take one sketch and play around with making other sketches. I should have had this in order, let me find. The first thing I did was just a color pencil sketch. I thought, let me just see, can I make a sketch just using color pencils that I like and that has enough depth and texture. I did not like this at first. What's interesting is this morning when I was pulling these out to look at them, I kept looking at this. Now I think the main reason I liked it is because I liked the value, the water and all the rest, I did really dark. But this is just color pencils using this as reference. And you can see how it's nice when you just take one as reference and you're gonna see how different they each are. So I did that one. Then, let's see, I do feel like I made notes. Let's see what this says. All right, I don't know the order, but basically, this is one that I used watercolor as my base. Did I, is that watercolor? Yes. Watercolor as a base, then building up using color pencil and then Neo Pastels. That's all I used on this. And I'm really happy with depth of texture. Let me move all of this stuff out of the way. So there's my original. There's my color pencil. Here's a watercolor. And then I did another watercolor. Let's see, right here. This was another one I did. Just using watercolor as my base and then building up color pencil and Neo Pastel. Again, I love this one. I feel like it's got a lot of depth. Then I thought, okay, well, the page buckling, the paper buckling, waiting for the dry is really annoying. So I thought, let me try the soft pastels as a base. 
thin color pencils in neo colors and that's what i did and i love this also i think this and the color pencil are my two favorites i think i'm actually want to take this version now and do some versions with the lighter water uh, but this is a real good option i think with my new markers and with soft pastels this is going to be a good option because then what i'll do now that i have all these i can if i wanted to make larger paintings from these and i have all this you know material or um you know options to kind of flip around but i'm very very happy with these especially these two Okay, let me clear all this out and let's open those new markers. I can't remember what else is in that order, but we'll just swatch everything and see what we think. All right, here's my new supplies. Let's see what we have. I ordered three more of the Talons sketchbooks because I love these and it looks like things are falling out all right i got to order this but yay i love the derwent light fast pencils and i got spruce green i probably was lured in by the name and then one one rogue marker who that looks bright Oh, look at this. One lost the cap. That's a bummer. Hopefully it's not dried out. Nah, it'll probably be fine. Oh no, I see several that have lost. But, ah, that's so annoying. Oh me. Well, they'll just have to replace them if they're dried out. Another colored pencil. Hmm. I don't remember purchasing that either. This is brown ochre 10%. Oh yeah, I think Emma Carlisle mentioned that when I was like, oh, I'll throw that in there. Okay. Oh my gosh. Another one with the lid off. Are you kidding? Okay. I'm going to put those over here because if they are dry, and then this is interesting. Some of these are wrapped and plastic and then some aren't. That's weird. Hmm. Okay, let me take these out real quick. Oh boy, I bought far more than what I remembered. Hmm. Okay, let's just put these in families of brands. Hmm. I'm liking the range of those. Let's put those there. I want to swatch those. The packaging on these is interesting. It looks really cheap. I like how light weight they feel though. Okay, let me put these kind of in family order of what it looks like from the packaging. Okay, then we have those. All right, let's do some swatching. I'm bummed about those that the lid off. I feel like, well first what I feel like is I need to bring y'all down. My gut tells me I'm going to like the Faber-Castell best, so let's just swatch those. This one is the beige red. I also know this, wait, let me grab. One of the things I like about this one, which is the earth green, is that on the big tip, it's lighter than if you use the smaller tip. Now, I think that's pretty cool, and I'm hoping the rest are like this. This is earth green. Okay, I should have swatched that with the greens, but I didn't. Okay, so this is the beige red. That's nice, it's not as light um, as I was hoping. What did I say this was called? Beige red. Okay, then we have warm gray. Mm, it's not real warm. 
I do find the tips are just a little bit darker, but not crazy. Warm gray. I, I do like the way they're coming out of the, the, the nib though. Ooh, that's a nice color. This is green gold. That will be used a lot. Oh yeah, that is darker. Ooh, I like that. Green gold. Okay, so far I'm loving these, except for how fat they are. This is called Sanguine. I should be showing y'all, sorry. Sanguine, super nice color. Yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, yes, okay, feeling happy, feeling happy. This is Indian Red. These feel nice. That tip isn't any different, really. Okay, let's see these greens. This one feels really bright. This is called May Green. Uh, I'm gonna be just stunned if I like this. What I think I'm going to do, though, yeah, that's way too... Oof. Here's what I want to do, though, real quick. Let's see if we can unscrew this and get into the innards, because if so, then we could add something to neutralize it. No, that's not unscrewing. Nope. Okay. Well, I thought that was going to be an option. But when you think about layering, putting that down and then putting something more red on top to neutralize it is the way you have to think about things. Ooh, that's super nice. What is this? Ooh, ooh. Permanent green, oops. permanent green olive very nice. Oh, it's lighter and quite different that way. Permanent green olive. Permanent green olive. Hmm. I like it better out of the big tip. Then if you're going to layer dark colors like this, oh, that's nice too. This one's called dark sepia. Oh, that's nice too. I'm loving that they're different on the ends. I don't understand that, but they just are. Okay, let's see how my dried out ones are gonna be. This one's called Warm Gray Five. Hmm. Whoa, that's dark. Oh, but it's lighter on that end. This is the weirdest thing. Is that four or five? It's five. Or maybe wow okay neither one of that like neither one of those tips what were dried out this is ultramarine 120 that is really pretty I am liking these grays mm, I'm gonna call that really ultramarine I feel like that's more like cobalt blue now this end oh but that's kind of dry that did get kind of dry I'm gonna contact the company Hmm. Yeah, that got kind of dry. That's a bummer. Let me set that one aside so I can contact them. This one's called Endothur... Yes, 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 blue. Something. Something. Oh, it's dried too. Bummer. What a bumsers. Ooh, it got goopy. <laughs> but that side's nice. It looks like completely two different colors. Huh. And uh, something blue. Okay. Looks really good about fixing things if it's not right. So I know that they'll replace those for me. Okay. Windsor and Newton. Uh, wait, where's your name? Oh, Pale Rose. Yeah, that's one of the things I love about. Oh, that's a tiny tip. Oh. Hmm. I'm not going to use the tiny tip. Whoa, that looks neon. What did we call this? Rose? Pale rose? Holy smoke, that looks like neon. That's nice, though. Okay, even though this is a tiny, I like that. It comes out better than what I thought it would. Hmm, interesting. Maybe I'll put this over here so I don't forget. Okay, I'm happy with that one, too. Okay, cadmium orange hue. 
whoa, that's bright too. These are more neutral. This next one is called Raw Sienna. One of the things I like about these is you can tell the small and the big tip because the way it's laid out, that would be helpful. Mm, that's nice. These are have more of a transparent Raw Sienna. Kind of happy that I've got these choices. This next one is called Yellow Ochre. Oh no, that one's all dried up too. Mm. Oh boy, completely dried up. Okay, well, that's going to go in the contact lick. Can't even tell what that color is. Okay, this next one's Burnt Sienna. I know Blick watches this channel, so. Ooh, I like that this one's lighter. What do we call this? Burnt Sienna. Sorry, I'm such a messy writer. Okay, this next one, Burnt Red. Ooh, that's a nice kind of name, Burnt Red. That looks very Burnt Sienna. Ooh, oh, I like that. That's dark. I just love that. Um, it's different. Now, I'll have to try to remember that. This next one is Burnt Umber. That's nice, too. They go down different. It's interesting. This one almost has like a paint feel to it. Burnt Umber. Oh, I'm not going to be able to fit the rest on the page. That's a bummer. Okay, this next one is called, what, what, what are you called? Raw Umber. Very nice. Gorgeous. Man, I am really happy with these. Jeez, oh, jeez, oh. All right, let's switch the page here. This one is called Hooker's Green. My guess is that's going to be too bright for me, but we'll see. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, it's nice and rich. Are you kidding? Yes. Oh, man, I can't wait to go out and sketch. Wow. There's, they're kind of matte also. Are these matte? Yeah, they're all kind of matte. Look at this color range. I wish I had put them all on the same page. Mm. Sandy. Okay, wait. What's this next one called? Mid Blue. It's a little more ultramarine. I like that. Oh, yeah. That's for real ultra. I was about to write ultra, but it's called... Why can't I remember? I tell y'all. Mid Blue. Mid. Ooh, man, that's nice. Oh, I'm so happy with these guys. I'm thrilled. Wow. I'm thrilled except for the fact that I've got three that are dried up, but I know Blick will make it okay. Let's test these two pencils that I've got. And this first one is Derwent Light Fast Spruce Green. I have high hopes for you, Spruce Green. Oh, it's nice, but I do have something similar. I do like it though. I want to kind of change all my, as I order, I, I really want to stay with Derwent and Light Fast. I like them. Okay, and then this next one is Illuminance, and it's Brown Ochre 10%. That's nice. Ooh, I like that. Wow, very flesh color. I think I have something similar, but that's nice. 832. 832 Illuminance. Okay. Woo, woo, woo. We've got a little bit of room here. Let's do this. Let's act like we, ooh, let's do, we'll, we'll do like we've got a little landscape. Wow, that water got a little crazy. So I'm out there. I am getting color down quickly. I'm usually like smearing it around, whatever I'm doing. It's kind of usually quick like that. Let's get, let me refer back to my, ooh, this sanguine. Where are you, sanguine? Then let's get some of this hookers. I'm thrilled with these markers. 
thrilled. Then what I would do is as that's drying, let me grab my pencil case. All of this stuff out of the way. Let me zoom y'all back out just a little bit. This works good because that is allowing all that to dry just a little bit. Okay, then what I would do is take different color pencils and I can tell it's still drying just a little bit. And I would start working into it to lighten it, to darken it. Ooh, let's try a new blue here. Oh no, that's green. Oops. I would just start adding more texture. And what happens is, so you can see through that marker showing through there, which is so nice. I hope this isn't boring to y'all. So, building up, building up. Obviously, I'm just doing this super quick to show y'all. here and I would just continue layering so maybe now I would bring in some pastels and again just kind of keep building up texture and color in this way Maybe we've got some blue sky and oh here comes some ducks oh they're flying in I better get those real quick in there that's how that works <laughs> I'm like, oh something just flew some birds oh we better get those in and the sun's shining let's get that in and so I just kind of keep layering so that's how that works and I'm loving these colors woof, 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 woof. wow very happy with this all right what I'm going to do now is go contact Blick about my dried up ones and then do a little swatch like this. Where is my color swatch? So in my bag, I keep a color swatch of my color pencils and then on the back of my markers. So this was a really beautiful array and I, I haven't replaced that completely. All these lighter colors right here, I'm not gonna have. But what I'll have to do is, I'll have to do something like put that pale rose down, let it dry, and then take, that's probably not dry. Yeah, it's not dry. If it was dry, it would take this color pencil a little better. But basically, because it's not the exact color that I want, you just have to shift it some. And so I could even put some oil pastel over it and rub it in. And that's how you start building up texture. So it's kind of nice that I don't have the same colors or exactly what I would like, but I'm very happy. Actually, that ultramarine and the mid blue are quite similar, but I think I like the mid blue a little bit better if I was choosing. I wish I knew what that indithalafafafa blue looked like. But uh, very happy with all these, the way they go down, everything. I'm kind of excited even about this little. I like the way that is working. Ooh, good purchase. Okay, I hope this was helpful to think through this process, but basically I've showed you how I'm now moving into more light fast archival artist quality supplies for my sketchbook. But the point that I wanna get across to y'all is you don't have to have that. In fact, I would encourage you not to have archival. I think it's fine to have that, but I, a lot of my supplies that I've had in my toolbox are non-archival light fast because first off, the light is never going to get in here. And then second, um, I, I want freedom to play. 
So, those are my thoughts. It's maybe a weird thing that I'm like, here, I've got archival, but I'm telling you not to. But I think that is the point that I wanted to get across. That you don't need archival. You need things that you feel freedom to use. So if it's Tombow markers or even something cheaper, Pentel oil pastels are great. The um, gelatos, so things like tempera sticks, tempera paint sticks, gelatos. I love these things. Uh, Faber Castell has some gelato like things. These are all basically like kid supplies, but I love them. They just make wonderful marks. They dry quickly. They make me stay loose. It's very hard to replace that, and I'm sure I will continue to still use this stuff because it's amazing. It layers up. I mean, I don't know. But because of possibly making books in the future, I just thought I'm going to do this, and I'm really happy I did now. Don't forget the landscape class, taking notes in the landscape. There's so much information in that about how I use supplies, and you get to see how much I get my hands in the supplies. Yeah. So make sure to check that out if you're interested. The day that I did the sketch at the lake, I also did this sketch. In fact, I started off with this one and I do like this one. I thought I would turn the camera on and do a time lapse. I'm kind of tired of this one or I feel like I've kind of like figured this out and learned it. So I thought I would turn the camera on and play with all the materials of layering, starting with my markers, color pencils, maybe some watercolor and some oil pastels and just kind of build it up. Thought maybe you would enjoy seeing that. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to grab a plain blank sketchbook and have this sitting off to the side as my reference and just take a few minutes. I think I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes and see how that goes. I'll probably end up working a little bit longer than that, but we'll see.
Okay, I ended up doing um, 30 minutes total, and I usually don't time myself. I would have thought, looking at this, that I would have spent about 15 minutes. That's kind of funny. Uh, but 30 minutes, and um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I love layering like this. I'm absolutely loving these markers, loving them. Really great purchase, and they're gonna be very handy to have out. So I used everything that I mentioned. The only thing I did not use was soft pastel, but I don't even think I mentioned those, but I used a little bit of watercolor. I used color pencils, markers, and a little bit of neo color. In fact, I feel like these birds aren't, not neo color, uh, neo pastels. These are pastels right here, oil pastels which are nice for just kind of going over things. I definitely could have spent some more time working on this, but um, I'm happy with it. So here was the original that I did very, very, very quickly there at the park. And then here's the one that I did here. And for some reason, I didn't take as many risks as I usually do when I'm at home just sketching like this, maybe because the camera was on, I don't know, but you got to see a little of how I layered up and hope that was helpful and that you enjoyed that. All right, I hope that was helpful to you, kind of see that process, to think about your supplies as far as archival and light fast, that for the most part, you just really don't have to worry about it. It's gonna be in your sketchbook. It's not gonna be exposed to light. I want you to use things that you feel free with. And I think that was the whole point of this. You're likely not gonna be ever making books from these. I feel like sometimes we can have this like famous artist mentality of I need to have light fast archival things because what if one day there are so many artists out there do you know how many galleries i've been to that have seen artist stuff that's on like cardboard and with terrible paint and the paint's cracked and not archival things it's going to be okay it's going to be fine and there are people that get paid to make that stuff look and be fine later so don't worry about it i want you to have freedom to play and though i am switching mainly to archival things the whole point of this video was one, to show you how to layer, to give you some tips on that, and two, to remind you that this needs to be a place to play and to not be worrying about if you have kids supplies or not. Like use the kids supplies, use the cheap stuff, and also how layering supplies like builds texture and creates interest. So. I hope that was very helpful and interesting. Also, I wanted to tell you guys before we leave, I mentioned last week that I started a blog. I've decided to not call it a blog because it's just not really what it is. I'm using Substack as my platform. Guys, everybody that's over there is loving it. I cannot tell you what an amazing platform it is. So I am posting a lot over there lots of videos they're casual they're shorter so basically they're in between my instagram and youtube videos they're really good everybody that's all i'm constantly hearing is i love this platform i'm loving what you're sharing i'm like yes i know i'm loving it too what it is is you're going to subscribe via email and then every single time that i make a post you're going to get an email that's how you'll get notified you don't have to worry about some other whatever notifying or scrolling down enough it is this clean, crisp platform. What's nice is I can post a video there. I can do some text, so some writing about it, some things maybe either I forgot to tell you or added bonus stuff. And then I'm also able to add pictures if I want. So there's so many times that I'm like, oh yeah, I took pictures of that coffee shop and basically I did a video about it, but then I'm able to add stuff and I don't know. It's just a great platform. I was really surprised at how few of y'all jumped over and subscribed. I don't know if it's because of the email thing. Let me know if you're like, yeah, I don't want to give you my email or I get too much email already. You can view the stuff without subscribing, but you will not get notified at all. So I really encourage you to subscribe, sign up via email so you get notified. I'm going to be moving there more and more because it's just such an amazing platform. I cannot tell you how beautiful and clean and easy to use it is. It's been a really sweet community over there too. I feel like there's been more communicating and just in a different way. It just feels like a place for my people. So if you feel like you're one of my people, please go over there and subscribe and uh, check it out. There's a whole bunch there that you can just go and binge. It's just a place for inspiration 
encouragement, teaching, <sighs> casualness. I don't know. I'm loving it. It's really where I just want to be all the time instead of the other places that I am. So make sure to jump on there, please, because just go check it out. I think you'll love it. I think you'll be like, oh, wow, this is amazing. It's a newer platform, but I'm telling you, whew, it's good. It is really, really good. I just literally have no complaints about it. Okay, that is it for this week. I feel like it was a lot. I hope it was helpful and all of that. Okay, I'll see you back here shortly. And if you need some Sandy, you know, because I'm not going to be posting here for two more weeks, you can go over to my Substack and binge watch because there's a lot over there, a lot of good stuff. All right, bye guys.